Hey everyone and welcome back to another of the Unreal Basic tutorials. So this is actually going to be added on to the end of this playlist before we go into the C++ content. I realized that I've actually missed a part of the setup. It's something really simple and it's just because I was trying to avoid dropping everything straight into their own functions so that we could see a more organic process of creating the project. So basically what I've done is when we've gone through we don't have the screen that I had planned to appear between levels so you just instantly jumped into the next level when you complete that um, and we kind of have the shell ready to do this so if we jump straight into our game mode blueprint and we can add this back in so inside of the game mode we've actually got most of the stuff that we need to do this and we already have our load next level function which is what i'd planned to use to fill this um, and what i wanted to demonstrate is that we're going to come in to our level complete function and we're just going to break this down and tidy things up into their own logical compartments so at the moment, we pretty much have our load next level stuff working here. So this is where we want to start separating things down into its respective function. So if we do this, in fact, we can just take everything we have in the level complete function, because remember, this was only really here just as a placeholder, just so that we could get things going whilst we're going through. And as I said, that was just to give it that more organic feeling that you'd be placing things in to try and get things working to see how everything is going to run and then we're going to come back later what we're doing now and clean things up so if we control x to drag all of this out and we'll paste this into the load next level function and then what we want to do is when we actually complete the level quite simply we're going to create the widget and again we already have this set up as well so i'm not 100 percent sure how i forgot to do this uh, because what we have is our wbp level complete and we just want to show this on screen and we even have our nice fade animation ready so we've spent the time making this so we're going to go back now and implement this so in the level complete function what we want to do is we will create our widget we're going to fill in the bpw underscore level complete we will add this to the viewport and then the next thing we want to do is to delay the next function being called. And because we're doing this inside of a function, we don't have access to the standard delay node. So if we try to get a delay, that's not possible. But this is quite simple to overcome inside of a function. We just do a call to set timer by function name. So we can see here, if we start typing that, we'll get the set timer by function name option. And these are really easy to use. Basically, we want the function name that we're going to call next, which is going to be our load next level. So this is context sensitive. So make sure that you've spelt everything absolutely correctly with the same uppercasing happening uh, just to make sure in fact what you can do is just double click on the name and just paste this straight in if you want it to be completely safe here and then all we want to do is give it the delay that we want to wait between the next function being called and I think the fade animation was about two seconds on our level complete so it's actually one second so we'll give this two seconds so we've got one second for this to load and then a little bit of time for the player to read it when it's been there completely and then we're going to load them into the next level so what this will do is after we've spawned our widget to the screen it's going to wait two seconds and then it's going to call our load next level function and as i said we actually had all of the logic here ready to go so it's still going to do the same thing so we'll check whether or not we're at the end of the game and if we're not then we will load the next level as we were doing and if we are we're going to replace the current widget with the game over widget and in fact this isn't going to replace it this is just going to overlay it and we can fix that if that's a problem so if we just double check we'll play through so we'll just get to the end of the level and what we should get now, there we go, we get the nice fade to the level complete and then we're dropped into the next level. And I'll just try and do this without dying. Okay, so I've probably just skipped ahead because I kept failing that level and then we should be dropped into our final level in a moment. And there we go. So now we're given the thank you for playing cube runner and we get the option to replay the game. So that all works. Now, if you do have a problem with our level complete not removing the temporary level complete widget, what we can do is in between adding this to viewport and calling the next function, we can pull off of here and we'll just promote this to a variable. We'll call this uh, bpw underscore level complete and we'll just connect these up. So we'll plug these in together. We'll remove that pin and then we'll plug that in there and we'll just make sure that this reference is what we are adding to the viewport. And then inside of the load next level, in between this call, this is gonna be the only place we want to do this. We want to control drag in our bpw underscore level complete We'll find out whether or not this is valid. So we'll do the question mark version, which will give us the function with the executions that we can call. And then we'll plug that in here. So if this is valid, we want to remove this from the screen. So we'll just do a remove from parent call. And we'll plug this in between the call to create the next widget. Just tidy this up. And of course, we want to account for if this is not valid. So if this isn't valid, then we're just going to skip this bit. And we're going to go straight down to calling the game over widget. 
the way that we've set this up, this should always be valid. And basically that is valid, if I haven't mentioned this before, it just means that it's checking for whether this exists and has been created. So as soon as we call this here, we're going to fill this, which means it does exist and it has been created and it's been populated in this variable, which means this is now a valid variable. It, it basically just means it isn't null, it's not nothing. So when we get here, we're just checking that this variable has a value inside of it. And if it does, then we're going to remove that from the parent, which is essentially the same as destroying an object. So that's just how you remove a widget. And the main reason we're doing this is we just want to make sure that we're not trying to remove something that doesn't exist because that would throw an error and possibly crash the game. So as I said, in the way that we've set this up, we should always be creating our level complete widget anyway. So it should always be valid. But just in case, as a safety precaution, we're going to do this check. If it is, then we're going to remove it. If not, then we're going to move straight on to adding our game over widget and then just proceeding as usual. Now you'll see that we didn't have any actual problems with overlap or anything. So this isn't going to change anything, but this is just, I wanted to include that just to show people how we can do this. Uh, even though to us it makes no difference, we would have still had the other widget in the background, even though you couldn't see it. So, and I appreciate that some people probably would have wondered how to get rid of that because it in some cases isn't going to be ideal. And in other cases, although it hasn't caused any issues here, it may cause issues in other projects or other setup. Okay, so in the previous video, I did say that the C++ content is coming and that would have been the final video in the blueprinting section of the basics playlist. Whilst I've been going back through and checking some of the C++ logic, I've obviously noticed that we had an empty function and that I hadn't finished all of the implementation. So I just wanted to come back and add this in so that everything is ready to go for the blueprint section. Now that we have that all done, we are definitely finished with the blueprinting of this project and I will be getting the C++ content started very, very shortly. So as I mentioned, if you are interested in that side of the playlist specifically, then don't forget to subscribe to be kept up to date with the release of that content. Hopefully that's proven useful. And if any of you were wondering why there was an empty function, you now know it's just because I forgot to fill it. As ever though, if you've enjoyed this or found the video useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helped. To be kept up to date with the latest content coming from the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.